Hello everyone. This is Vicki Ashard from Nature's Best. Thank you for joining me today. Today we are going to be painting a wagon, pumpkins, and mums. And I hope you are enjoying the fall days and the colors of fall. This weekend we had a wonderful time in Indiana with my son and his family. And uh, we went to a harvest fest. Uh, it was a corn maze. And we walked through cornfields with huge corn. I never saw such huge corn before and I never actually walked through the maze. And the kids would walk through the maze and uh, use a map and find the scarecrows. Every time they found a scarecrow they would get a punch. So that was a lot of fun and then the next day we went uh, to the this place where you could uh, buy pumpkins and dig up mums. And uh, my daughter-in-law picked out some really pretty mums and then they had this wagon and they put them in the wagon and that's what we're going to paint today. So uh, everything is ready and uh, my paper, my drawing is on my transfer paper and I'm going to draw it so that it will transfer and the reason I want to show you that is so that you can see how I drew, drew this picture. And then it's on a Strathmore 140 pound watercolor paper and I have my tape around my paper with a quarter, for a quarter inch border and remember to when you do put your paper down uh, and your card down and, and the first tape that you put down for your border always put that arrow there because you're going to be twisting this uh, which is on foam board. You can also put it on ca card, cardboard if you want if you don't have foam board but you're going to be twisting it so you want to make sure that arrow is there so you know when you get done with putting your tape on that that's the top because it is a card and it opens up okay and uh, so let's get started Okay, we traced our drawing onto the watercolor card and um, now I want to talk a little bit about the colors. Okay, these are a list of the colors that I used. You could use anything that you want though, any, anything you have in your house. Okay, I start out with um, Viridian Hue and Phalo Blue. I later find out that phalo blue is a very stainy color and I try to get those clouds there out with my Kleenex. Didn't work. I should have known that. I did know that but I totally forgot about that. So anyway it's a good thing to learn. I don't think I'll ever do it again. So I went and uh, put pro white.
And now I'm starting to put water on my grass area there. I did use uh, the about the five colors that I saw in the grass. You don't have to use that many. I'm using um, a fan brush to put the grass in, but I learned something here too, and I probably, well, I did know that, but just tried something different. Uh, putting the details in later is better, so I wasn't finished with putting the, the whole entire color that I wanted on the grass. There I am putting that white on again. It's called Pro White and it's a opaque watercolor is what it is. There I am putting more color on my grass and it does cover up some of that the grass blades that I put in. So I probably probably would have been easier to wait put the grass blades over my color. That's okay. I just do it again to put that look at the grass. And there I am with my liner brush doing the same thing, putting different colors in. Now I go back with the phalo blue and try to define those clouds. What I should have probably used was ultramarine blue and cerulean blue. Those are very liftable colors and it would uh, those clouds would have lifted up with that tissue paper. But that's okay. I think it would have been a more natural color but you know the clouds would look more natural but but uh, but the pro white you know worked. Okay, painting my wagon. This was a wagon that my daughter-in-law has had in her family for a long time since she's been very young. Little girl. And um, so my wagon colors, the bottom layer was a yellow ochre. And then uh, the, the um, I saw yellow in it, you know, it had like scratches of yellow in it, a very rustic looking wagon. And uh, then on top of that, I put permanent alizarin crimson and burnt umber mix. And on the very bottom, there is yellow ochre. And I'm using a number eight brush here, covers a lot of area. And if you are using a Strathmore watercolor card, you'll see that the paint kind of sits on there quite a bit. So I go back and I, a lot of times, and I put my um, brush on a towel and then soak up some of that water that just sits on that card, which is okay. It's fine. It's not like the Arches paper that I use when I do bigger designs you know, use bigger paper, make bigger designs. Just I have to soak up that water more often than if, if it was arches. And here because I am, I am, I've, I've, I think I am a, consider myself a careful painter. I like to paint in the areas, especially this detailed, uh, drawing that I did of the wagon to cover all the areas. Once in a while I do leave leave white areas. I think that's okay too. I just want to make sure that I cover these detail areas of this wagon. Then on the side there it had a very scratched off uh, wording. It said what probably what kind of wagon it was and uh, couldn't read it so I thought that was very interesting and I made it just the way it looked. Uh, you'll see I go back in there later to, to 
make it look like there's words, little you know, a few little letters on there. Had hardware hardware on it, so I use Payne's Gray. Payne's Gray is you can um, if you don't put a lot of water with Payne's Gray, it'll turn out dark like that black. If you put water a lot of water in Payne's Gray, it'll turn out a, a gray. Um, usually I mix my um, black. I use ultramarine blue and uh, burnt sienna or burnt umber. But this time I wanted my black to be a little darker. And this Payne's Gray gets things really dark. And that's by Reeves. It's a student gray, but it uh, has an excellent uh, light fast, which means you know it won't won't fade. So that's what you look for. That's a good thing to look for when you uh, look for paints. That's why I love M. Graham. Uh, has a lot of uh, good good light fast rating, and uh, M. Graham. Uh, I I love it because it's uh, it has honey in it, and your paints will not uh, dry out. And there I'm. I saw a lot of gray around the black of those wheels, so that's what I'm putting in there. And just dark, darkening that hardware there. And it was interesting to do these knobs. Um, the knobs I use permanent alizarin crimson in the darker areas and conacrin red in the lighter areas. I wanted to make sure those little knobs had highlights because that was what made it uh, look protruding. You know, you, you can tell they're, they stand out. Okay, the pumpkins. The um, I put the the gamboge on the bottom of the pumpkins and yellow ochre and pyro red mix. And that pumpkin, that small pumpkin, that um, actually my husband and I believe it was my husband and granddaughter picked out. I was wondering if I can't remember if it was my grandson or granddaughter. Later, you'll see that I put a little green in that pumpkin because. Uh, it had a little green in it. This patch had so many pumpkins. It was just, I just loved it. I should have taken, I should have showed you a picture of the, in fact, I didn't take a picture. I didn't have my camera with me at the time. Um, used my husband's camera, but uh, many, many pumpkins in this really interesting pumpkin patch. And these flowers, um, what this, uh, place is is that you can they allow you to dig up these mums and there I am putting the little green in there and you dig them up and put them in a pot and you can take them home now this brush I'm using a number four and later when I did the mum on the left I noticed that um, I thought of actually that if I used a bigger brush I could get a lot more done in, a, in a less time. So it took me quite a bit of time to do these flowers because I was using a number four. You can go in and do uh, do these flowers with a number eight and um, the number four doesn't hold as much uh, paint uh, as the number eight and so I had to keep going back to my palette all the time. So, um, next time I'll, if I do these smaller flowers, I, I think a number eight would just do fine. It did do fine in the, in the flower on the, on the left. And there I am. See how much more faster a uh, number eight is. And this pot had the dirt there, so, um, so I wanted to paint that dirt, and I just love my colored dirt. I got exactly the color of that dirt by looking at my color chart and the, the pot clay, uh, I call it clay, it's really dirt. It was a mix of burnt sienna and viridian hue, which is, I would have never thought of that by myself if I didn't do my color chart. That's a very important 
thing to do when you're an artist um, with your colors so that when you go to paint a picture and there's a color there you just don't know what two colors to mix it'll have it right on your chart uh, which is really a I love I, I've loved it I, I made my color chart oh wow while, a while ago one day I'll make a video on that a whole video on my color chart because that's that's a really important thing and then I did my clay pot there actually it wasn't a clay pot it was a plastic pot um, but that that color was burnt sienna was my pot oh and there now I made my stem too thick so what what I did was you put your brush in your water and um, you just take your paint out of course that's what I try to do in my remember on the sky there's going to be some colors that aren't lifting colors they're staining colors like the uh, <clears throat> excuse me like the phalo blue so um, they you know you can't lift out those kind of colors but but my pumpkin colors were liftable and then later back later on I go back and and uh, put more, more color in my pumpkin now I'm seeing that there is no distinguish area between you can't see the difference in that smaller pumpkin than where I have the leaves so did you see that I put my brush on that part of the pumpkin to lift a little of that color so that you'd be able to see that uh, distinguishable difference there I put a little gray on the on the wheels it was an old wagon so you know it had a little gray on it a little shadow there and right there I had made that the wagon handle too thick so I went back and I worked around that like I say I consider myself a careful painter when it comes to details so I do want to make things look like they belong and there I go fixing that pumpkin there on the top I thought that I wanted my um, flowers in some areas to stand out a little bit more so I use a little dark color there to make that happen and I'm just refining and defining things getting all the areas that I want fixable fixed <laughs> going a little bit more with a little bit more white just making the trying to make those clouds natural looking but uh, do use ultramarine blue and cerulean blue if you do the sky and not phalo blue I'm putting some highlights on the wagon making that stand out a little bit and that's that's my painting I'm trying to get it in focus for you I, I hope you enjoyed this video I'm taking my uh, masking tape off it's always nice to see that quarter inch border makes the picture look really pretty I think and if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and share this with, with a friend. There we go. I just want to show you that when I pick up my card, I put a little tape in there to hold my card down when I paint. And I take my tape off. And there it is. And thank you for joining me today. Happy creating!